morning. Welcome to morning.
Let all the earth acclaim God. Sing to the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Let us pray. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilate. O oh, shout to the Lord and triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever. His faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our psalms appointed for today are Psalms 1, 2, and 3. Psalm 1 Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful, their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on His law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows of the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Psalm 2 Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together? Against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. He whose throne is in heaven is laughing. The Lord has them in derision. Then he speaks to them in his wrath, and his rage fills them with terror. I myself have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Let me announce the decree of the Lord he said to me, You are my son. 
this day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall crush them with an iron rod and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now you kings be wise, be warned you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear and with trembling bow before him lest he be angry and you perish, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are they all who take refuge in him. Psalm 3 Lord, how many adversaries I have! How many there are who rise up against me? How many there are who say of me, There is no help for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory, the one who lifts up my head. I call aloud upon the Lord, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and go to sleep. I wake again because of the Lord sustains me. I do not fear the multitudes of people who set themselves against me all around. Rise up, O Lord, set me free, O my God. Surely, you will strike all my enemies across the face. You will break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. the Lord's servant. He was despised, he was rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, as one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteem him not. Ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the torments he endured, while we thought he was being punished, struck by God and brought low. He was pierced for our sins, bruised for no fault but ours, his punishment has won our peace, and by his wounds we are healed. We had all strayed like sheep, all taking our own way. But the Lord laid on him the guilt of us all. A reading from the Word of God, taken from the book of 1 John, beginning at chapter 3, verse 18, concluding at chapter 4, Verse 6 Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. Dear friends, 
Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Word of God, taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 11, verses 1 to 6. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Ever, ever so often, when I was younger, we were helping mommy do something in the kitchen and we might start talking and her response is, talk less. Talk less, you will work harder. Talk less, you will do more. And, you know, it's almost like she's saying, shut up. But she never once said shut up. She says, if you talk less, you will do more work. So just, just talk less and, and focus on the work. And I, I thought about that as I looked at Jesus' response to one of John's disciples. Now John was imprisoned. John was imprisoned for him speaking up against Herod and Herod's, um, for example, as a king. We know that story. And, of, and we can understand how John was feeling because everything around him was showing him, you know, something weird was happening. They were rising up. They were talking out against Jesus and all that Jesus was doing and, and so forth. John was the one who confirmed and acknowledged Jesus at the River Jordan, remember? But yet now he's in prison and all of these negatives around him are happening. So he asks the question. Is he really the Messiah? So he sends his disciples to ask the question. And Jesus does not respond in talk. But Jesus points the disciple to look at the truth. Look at his actions and you figure it out for yourself. You decide for yourself. So what Jesus was doing was confirming through actions. Confirming his truth through actions. And we should consider that as well remember everything jesus says follow him right jesus says follow him do just as he has done and so sometimes we just need to talk less and act more we tend to start 
and we are very good at it as Anglicans. Talking and dictating and trying to say do this, do that. But we don't respond with our actions. We don't support or talk or wait with our actions. So I want us to consider, just as Jesus done, Jesus, just as Jesus had done or did with this disciple from John, so that John can get the truth. Don't take my word for it. Look at the results. He healed, he comforted, he healed the blind, restored sight, he healed the lepers. And even in doing all of that, he brought people together. So while he was doing specific things, other things were happening at the same time. Good things uh, that we can we can that we could see because people were coming together, changing hearts and minds, and that is actually how the church began and grew. Not that he started the church, but because of what he was doing. And so I want us to consider our own actions. What are our actions saying or in actions? Are we talking too much and acting less? Dan says yes. We need to start putting some actions behind a lot of our words. Let us start acting that the better benefits are achieved. Our goal of following Christ is achieved. That we, our truth, is shown in our actions and not by words because our words are more and more becoming faulty and lies. So as believers, we need to start acting a certain way. We need to start living a certain way. Believing in Christ is not just in word, but in the way we live, which is our actions. Responding to others, showing love and being peaceable, being kind, being empathetic, and all of the fruits. Humility, that is what we lack so much and so are afraid of. When situations arise, our response or resolve must be firm and not clouded in fear. Not that fear doesn't come or fear happens, but that when it comes, we know where our source is, where our relief is, where our strength is. And so we run to God. That is us showing in our actions of faith. So others will know us by our love. Others will know us by our faith. Others will know us by our sincerity. Others will know us by our truth. And so come to believe in this God. See how important it is for us to do our part so that others come to believe. That others will draw near to Christ. When we don't act, we deprive people from coming to Christ. And imagine if we're doing that, it means we're putting stumbling blocks in others' ways. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us confirm God through our actions. Let our actions glorify God then. Put another. Let God be seen through us that others will know the truth and come to believe in this God. Amen. I'll go in the strength of the Lord and pass His mark for my feet. I'll follow the lies of His word, not shrink from the dangers I meet. His grace is my station at His form is my one shall supply. On Him till my journey shall end, my unwavering faith shall
strength of the Lord, so confidence which faith will require. His grace as my shield and reward, my courage and zeal shall inspire. Since He gives the world of command, to meet and encounter the thought, with His sword of truth in my hand, to suffer and triumph and go. So let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He, asc he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Almighty and merciful Father, in your goodness keep us. We pray from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready both in mind and body, may accomplish with free hearts those things which belong to your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities of pleasing you. Grant that we may so pass its hours in the perfect freedom of your service, that at evening we may again give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite us to offer our own petitions at this time. Today I just want to offer thanks to God for the birds that join us in morning prayer and all of the living creatures that celebrate God with us. Father, we bless you and we thank you for the beautiful song we hear on mornings that give us joy, that help us to praise you, the sound of your birds and even the dogs in their barking. Thank you, O oh Lord, for these creatures that bring us comfort and peace. Father, we bless you, we, we praise you, and we thank you for these opportunities that you have afforded to us. This beautiful weather, this wonderful breeze. Thank you, Father. Amen. The prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet a light to our parts and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do have a wonderful week, everyone. And remember to let our actions speak of God. Amen.